Hey everyone and welcome back to Assassin's Creed Origins. On this video we're going to be doing the present day quest, Blood Drive. And this is a really short one, we just have to pick up the Cyclosporin over there and head back to the Animus and that's about it. Um, so when you reach this part of the game you get a ton of new lore which we're going to be reading. So if you've got no interest in that, just go ahead and skip forward to like the last few minutes of the video so you don't miss anything new. So, to read that lore, we're going, uh, we're going to press the Options button, which opens up her laptop. And you can see there's tons of categories here, and almost all of them have something new. So, let's just start at the top left, under Abstergo Historical Research Division, Documentation. And then we have Employee Manual, Abstergo Historical Research Division, Employee Manual, Front Page. Abstergo Historical Research, Abstergo Industries, New Employee Handbook. Abstergo Corporation, NDA. Non-disclosure agreement. Made between Leila Hassan and Abstergo Industries on January 6, 2014. Employee will perform services for Abstergo Industries that may require Abstergo Industries to disclose confidential and proprietary information to employee. Confidential information is information of any kind, nature, or description concerning any matters affecting or relating to employee services for Abstergo Industries, the business or operations of Abstergo Industries, and or the products, drawings, plans, processes, animus experience, or other data. The employee agrees as follows. Employee will hold the confidential information received in strict confidence and shall exercise an extreme degree of care to prevent disclosure to others. Employee will not disclose, uh, disclose or divulge either directly or indirectly the confidential information unless first authorized to do so in writing. Employee will, upon request or upon termination, deliver to Abstergo Industries any drawing, notes, documents, equipment, and material received from Abstergo Industries or originating from its activities for Abstergo Industries. Abstergo Industries shall have the sole right to determine the treatment of any information that is part or project-specific received from employee, including the right to disclose the same without prior patent applications, to file copyright registration in its own name, or to follow any other procedure as Abstergo Industries may deem appropriate. Abstergo Industries reserves the right to take disciplinary action up to and including termination and memory removal for violation of this, of this agreement. Memory removal, jeez. Signing below signifies that the employee agrees to the terms and conditions of the agreement stated above. And it's Simon Hathaway, Leila Hassan, which is the character I'm playing, and the date is January 6th, 2014. Abstergo Historical Research Division, Employee Manual, Mission Statement Historical Research Mission Statement The mandate of Abstergo's Historical Research Division is to conduct rigorous research into historical events and document this research in meticulous fashion, with a particular focus on investigating previously obscure incidents and shedding light on the historical personages involved therein. Research conducted and compiled by historical research division teams represents a broad potential benefit to a variety of academic disciplines, including archaeology, anthropology, environmental history, and political science. Visionaries and Pioneers Historical Research Division Visionaries and Pioneers Understanding Yesterday, Bettering Tomorrow the Historical Research Division was inspired by the works of Dr. Warren Vidich, a pioneer in the field of genetic memory science. Vidich's work needed raw data reaching beyond what was available at the time. The Historical Research Division was quickly put together, at first to accommodate Abstergo in its research, and soon took on a life of its own. Dr. Warren Vidich Dr. Vidich was responsible, responsible for Abstergo's first forays into, gen, into genetic memory ex, exploration. Without the benefits of Vidich's extensive research and rigorous approach to scientific practice, Abstergo would not be what it is today. Alvaro Grammatica Grammatica's background in mechanical engineering, biology, and computer science helped 
make him the first to recognize how rich and meaningful historical material acquisition could cement Abstergo standing in the modern day landscape. Isabel Ardent. Ardent joined the company as a digital archivist with a deep knowledge of computer science. She ushered in a data revolution and or a data revolution which reshaped Abstergo's acquisition, management, and archival of genetic memories. Simon Hathaway. Hathaway is the current head of the Historical Research Division. His insatiable thirst for knowledge of all things human drives the pursuit of historical and memory-based data towards unexplored frontiers. Philadelphia Facility Historical Research Philadelphia, uh, Philadelphia Facility an historical city seemed fitting for a facility thriving on history. Located just minutes away from the famous Delaware River, the building itself was designed in 1985 by the rising architect, Jean Novelle. The facility houses various divisions. Lineage and Acquisition is housed next to Abstergo Medical and both have very strong ties to historical research and the very special animus training program. The respected Juhani Otsu Berg, oversees the Philadelphia facility known to be a favorite venue for crucial directors' gatherings. Or gathering. Of course, nothing eclipses the imposing library and archive hall where all of Abstergo's knowledge, both physical and digital, is said to be stored under impenetrable security. Modern Day Historians Historical Research Modern Day Historians Abstergo's historians have nothing in common with the academic scholars you might be thinking of. They master a deep knowledge of historical tomes and an uncanny ability to successfully comb through the volum voluminous I've always said that word wrong voluminous, sure, databases owned by Abstergo. However, they express their true talent talents when out in the field, retracing what forgotten stories were left behind. Assisted by cutting-edge technology, each of our historical tactical team, HTT, is composed of a technician and a medical officer. Together, they gather the knowledge told by forgotten artifacts and extinct bloodlines. They uncover tales thought obsolete and combine the wisdom of oral history with tomorrow's scientific discoveries. These see-it-all, find-it-all teams allow Abstergo and all its divisions to push back on the limits of what is known and what can be done to better the future of each and every one of us. Medicine and History Historical Research, Medicine at the, at the Service of History What we know about who we are and what our purpose is in this universe will shape the scientific breakthrough of tomorrow. Men and women have been looking at foreign galaxies and the Challenger Deep for answers or shreds of evidence that could open the door to the next scientific revolution. Abstergo turned to a far more familiar phenomenon for answers. Us, humans. Perhaps the answer is with... with thing. They mean within. Perhaps the answer is within each and every one of us. The human genome conceals our blueprint, but perhaps it contains a lot more. Today we are exploring genetic memories, and we are already applying our knowledge to improve our... perform... Maybe performance? To improve our performance as individuals, but also as a global society. I think that sentence is all wrong. Tomorrow, we might explore memories hidden in structures far more obscure than the human, and who knows what we'll find. Such is the task of our medical, medical endeavors. We do not strive to heal the body through a direct cure. We strive to use our understanding of chemistry and biology to change the way we lead our lives for the better. Okay, field guide. Uh, field manual, front page. Abstergo Historical Research Division, Historical Tactical Team Field Manual. Emergency Procedures. Managing and balancing initiative when in the field. Standard procedures requires both members of a tactical historical team to signal without further delay or change. Ah, to signal without further delay any changes occurring in an ongoing mission. Changes in deployment, operations, methodology, timing, 
Person of interest and or expected results need to be communicated and approved by proper channels, both through central dispatch and internal memo. Form blah blah blah. Unauthorized action is to be considered only in the face of, Im of imminent danger or if facing the threat of permanently compromising an operation by losing crucial data beyond our means of historical recovery. Standard issue material. In the field at all times. Portable Animus. Sarcophagus HR8. Two high-performance laptops. Portable inverter generator, 7,000 watts. Four five-gallon gas cans, subject to vary with mission. One thermoelectric cooler with rations. Facultative for most, or for most urban setting operations, at team's discretion. One four-wheel drive SUV, 5.7 liter V8 with 6,900 pound towing capacity. Equivalent will be supplied if Abstergo issue vehicles are not available, or if abroad with no access to Abstergo's float. One standard issue pharmaceutical kit, complete with certified chemical set, auto injector, cannula, and defibrillator. I have no idea what a cannula is. But I'm sure somebody else does, and they can tell me. Animus FAQ. Portable Animus frequently asked questions. How to use, how to help. How do, or number one, how do I adjust the portable Animus's settings? Don't. Under no circumstances should this equipment be tampered with. The technician must connect to the instrument using the approved procedure only. Their vital signs will then be monitored by the medical officer, either locally or remotely. According to the readings, the medic may suggest course corrections and or best use of the medical equipment made available in the standard issue pharmaceutical kit to ensure the health and safety of the Animus user. 2. What is the procedure in case of power, power failure? In circumstances where the portable animus cannot be connected to a standard power supply, the generator provided in the technician's equipment offers 5-day autonomy of use with the standard supply of gasoline. If at any time power short shortages or failures are observed during animus use, it is the duty of the medical officer to notify the technician or to terminate animus activities until a reliable power supply can be found. The Animus includes a failsafe that prevents serious physical harm to the user. Number three, how is the portable Animus activated? Make sure the device is connected to a power source before attempting to turn it on. Boot the Animus using the on-off switch. For safety reasons, the Animus OS most, or must run for a minimum of 60 minutes before the technician initiates the genetic memory sequencing procedure. This allows the machine's thermogel to regulate, as well as permitting the medical officer to run standard activation procedure and to ensure the stability of the base readings. The technician should never initiate genetic memory sequencing prior to receiving the all-clear status from the medical officer. Number four, what is the procedure for managing animus malfunctions? In the case of a malfunction, the medical officer triggers the ejection protocol, ending the simulation in a manner that is minimally disruptive to the Animus user. After exiting the simulation, the technician transfers the most recent data to a secure autonomous drive before powering down the Animus. Teams may not attempt to investigate Animus malfunctions or to repair any part of the machine. If a malfunction compromises the successful completion of a mission, the technician must immediately inform Central Dispatch and send a report to their managing officer who may recommend that the mission be aborted. As per standard mission protocol, debrief is carried out at the team's flagship facility. The faulted device is to be returned to the Animus Project team for evaluation. Transfer of Rights Transfer of Rights Legal, legal Disclosure of Intellectual Property Rights While in the Field Disclaimer Abstergo Industries owns or retains the rights to all intellectual property and data that may stem from the activities of a member of any HTT, both on and off duty. Definitions. The term intellectual property applies to patents, patent applications, inventions, internet activity, archaeological and historical discoveries, genetic exploration and memories, and abilities acquired as a result of the animus bleeding effect. 
which I, if I'm understanding that correctly, means abilities you learn in real life from being in the Animus. The term also broadly applies to medical information, DNA sequencing, data, databases, registrations, and procedures or techniques discovered through use of the Animus. Unauthorized disclosure of any or all of the previous, uh, previously aforementioned items is strictly forbidden and can result in employee termination. Roles and Responsibilities Who does what in the field? Historical research division teams are composed of two Abstergo operatives. The efficiency of each team is based both is based both on excellence of individual skill sets and on the successful integration of these skill sets into a functional whole. Medical Officer Conducts genetic, chemical, composite, geological analysis of artifacts slash person of interest. Ensures the health and safety of both team members. Assesses personnel activities that may harm the success of any operation in progress. Provides chemical and pharmaceutical support to artifacts slash person of interest as required. Monitors the technician's animus readings and provides appropriate support. Technician. Oversees tracking and extraction of artifacts slash person of interest. Access the animus if required. Provides necessary technical support for the operation. Acts as primary point of contact for central dispatch. Prepares operations reports. Okay, next we have Animus Guide. Abstergo Historical Research Division, Animus Guide. Abstergo Animus Guide, front page. Animus. Uh, it says, powered by Abstergo, the journey through time of a journey through time. Abstergo Animus Guide, one, introduction. DNA is, is more than pure genetic information. It also contains zettabytes of factual and historical data, which we now call genetic memories. The initial goal of the Animus Project was to explore those genetic memories via virtual reality. Breakthrough discoveries allowed the technology to become a way for Abstergo users to actually interface with history and explore what was once thought lost forever. The Animus software is adaptive, so as the memories unfold, the program adapts sub or subtly to render a customized experience within the framework's boundaries. The experience unravels in the user's conscience. It unlocks reflexes and skills the body was unknowingly hiding. The Animus is a window to the past, a door to the future. Join us as we revisit just how this journey came to be. Two, where it all started. It was in Philadelphia in 1795 that Philip Singh Physic, I think, performed the first human blood transfusion in the history of medicine. The idea of transporting blood from one body to another fascinated the distinguished surgeon, but what he found exceeded his expectations. Fearing the scientific community would not be ready for such revelations, he gave his unpublished paper to his colleague and friend, Benjamin Rush. Physics knowledge was all but lost until Pauling, financed by the Rockefeller Fo Foundation, started researching the restricted archives of the Library Company of Philadelphia and found the physic paper that had been secretly preserved by Rush. Pauling's work on the hemoglobin structure, which was loosely borrowed from physics lost paper, paved the way for paved the way to his triple and double helix discoveries. Three, Abstergo's interest. Clinton B. Rosenberg, Ph.D., was hired by Abstergo to keep a very close watch on Dr. Pauling's work on DNA structure. He reported his findings directly to the director of Abstergo Chemical. The relationship eventually turned sour, but the information gathered proved essential to Warren Vidich's Animus Project. And that's kind of faded. Well, we can read it. August 14, 1952. Mr. Director, as requested, I am keeping you abreast of Dr. Pauling's latest findings. 
Please find an article slated for PNAS, enclosed, which proposes a structural model for dioxribonuclei or nucleic acid. I will spare you the details, but you will find this triple helix model, made of three intertwined strands of DNA, to be highly elegant. It rivals his earlier work on protein structure. I believe Abstergo Chemicals should pay special attention to the evolution of DNA science as it will likely unlock the very secrets of life. Please note I would be more than willing to play a more direct role to encourage Dr. Pauling's research efforts if you wish me to. In the meantime, I wanted to thank you for trusting me with the business of the Foundation. I am honored to facilitate the work of such brilliant scientists. Kind regards, Clinton B. Rosenberg, Ph.D. December 18th, 1984. Mr. Director, I don't know if you're still a part of Abstergo. Sometimes, when I get lost in senior moments, I wonder if you ever existed at all. I'm just so tired. I think my time here is coming to an end. We're sequencing whole genomes in a matter of weeks now. We're under phenomenal pressure to reduce delays further and ship everything to this man Vidic. We truly are nothing more than an assembly line at this point. What a waste. I'm not stupid, you know. Even this old man has realized our masters are after something of of utmost importance hidden in the human genome. They spare no expense to provide my kids with the most advanced technology to increase productivity. Like everyone here, I've heard the most preposterous rumors about Vidic's animus project, that memories of someone's ancestors are encoded in one's genes, that Abstergo believes that Claptrap explains why so many millions of dollars keep pouring in here. It just makes no sense. And to top it off, I never found another sample with triple helix DNA. My life's obsession was all for naught. So long, my friend. Clinton B. Rosenberg, Ph.D. Four, Abstergo's Early Prototype The earliest concepts for an animus prototype came from Abstergo Chemicals and appeared in 1960 under the guise of the Memorium S2000, or Memorium S2000. Very little was achieved and the prototype hardly left the drawing board, although some arrangements were went were made with the U.S. Army to test the memoriam through Project MK Ultra. Unlock the secrets of our past, powered by Abstergo Industries, Inc. Uh, five, first explorations. 1980 was the year when Warren Vidich was finally able to say mission accomplished. First users were launched in a series of genetic memory explorations, with varying results. In San Francisco, the surrogate initiative allowed Subject Zero, Eileen Bach, to explore memories outside of the subject's own bloodline, but it turned out to be, it turned out to be as dangerous as it was costly. The Animus Project focused on allowing users to explore their own genetic memories, even though the process was painful. It was somewhat safer and showed great promise for the future. Vidic's team at the Abstergo facility in Philadelphia was able to prove this in 1983 using the latest Animus 1.09 and Subject 4's genetic memories. Computing makes mind reading possible. Abstergo Industries, Inc. The Animus MS-3000. Six, the golden years. More stable than ever before and with greater control over the well-documented bleeding effect, the Animus 1.28 was developed by the Abstergo facility in Philadelphia in 2002. If the design was evolved over the last 10 years, the technology remained basically the same. It's true, few subjects were able to fully experience the simulations, and those who did could only visit their own genetic memories. The work accomplished by subjects 4 through 17, and later by all the participants in the Anime, or Anami, Anime? Anami training program was critical for the development of Animus technology and for all of Abstergo Industries' endeavors. And it's looking more like modern day now. 7. An Animus for All 
Building on the progress made by the Animus Project teams in Philadelphia, Rome, and Madrid, Abstergo Entertainment Division introduce, introduces a revolutionary system called the Animus Omega, a game console granting anyone anywhere unprecedented access to a variety of pre-recorded genetic memories. Helix later introduced a similar experience through a cloud-based service, eliminating the need for a console altogether. Of course, the simulations offered to the general public are only a fraction of what can be experienced through a genuine Animus system, and allow for a limited user interaction. But the technology gains in popularity and global interest soars. And there's the games! Animus, powered by Abstergo. Eight, reaching new heights with the Airy. Based on VR research, the Animus project teams realized they could maximize the efficiency of the Animus and even harness the bleeding effect where immersion and physicality are combined. Biotechnologies played a critical role in creating the epidural system used by Airy Animus. The visceral nature of the experience drove synchronization levels to new heights allowing for S-range genetic memory exploration never seen before. Instead of trying to contain the bleeding effect, the Airy unleashes it and uses its potential to blur the lines between the user's reality and the simulation they're engaged in. The Airy can only be used in a controlled medical environment. That looks cool. Nine, high-tech meets high mobility. The portable Animus HR8 is Abstergo's latest innovation. It channels the power of the Airy in a single compact suitcase that allows dedicated professionals to use the unit in the field. Previous operations sometimes require delicate extractions or place some genetic memories out of our reach. With a minimal medical support, technicians can now use the system for their own explorations or explorations ran on selected person of interest and the comfort of their surroundings. For safety purposes, the epidural connection has been replaced by a hematological link. It sequences the information stored in the user's red blood cells. Like any intravenous intervention, the result is fast, intense, and intertwined to the user's biological functions. Just like the Airy, the simulation, simulation is not transmitted to the user's brain. It is physically rendered through the user's organs and interpreted by the brain as being real. Okay, next is Field Briefing. Abstergo Historical Research Division Field Briefing. Field Briefing Assignment Description. Uh, Abstergo Operations Division, or Division. Field Briefing Assignment Description. To Leila Hassan and Deanna Geary. Level Clearance, three and up. Field Operation, blah, blah, blah. Type, Artifact of High Interest. Subject, new assignment. Effective date, uh, October 20th, 2017. Content. Historical tactical team, Leila Hassan and Deanna Geary. Scheduled departure, October 22nd, 2017. 6.05 p.m. from Philadelphia to HBE, whatever airport that is, on flight FUS-1011 through LHR. Also have no idea what that abbreviation's for. Assignment. Locate and recover artifact of high interest in the Katara Depression. Forecasted location at uploaded coordinates. Unidentified cave, grotto, hollow, geological formation. Team is to work remotely with technician on premises and medical officer stationed at fixed accommodation location. If found, the artifact is to be swiftly retrieved and taken back to HBE. Contact John Kane in London for paperwork and travel arrangements. Fully stocked rental vehicle will be, will be made available at Hangar 3C upon arrival in HBE. Present voucher and valid identification for release. Accommodation information will be uploaded to vehicle's GPS. Delivered by Tyra Williams. Submitted by Simon Hathaway. October 17th. Uh, or no, October 20th, 2017.
Okay, and then we have Leila Hassan Project, Animus Design. There's nothing under there, but there will be soon. Then we have Bayek Notes. It worked. It worked. I mean, the side effects suck, but my portable Animus is up and running. See what I did, Sophia? So, I don't know how long I was in there, but it was long enough. But I think this. What was it again? Medjai. Like a cop or sheriff? Note to self, look this up, find a good description. Bayek could be a member of this Brotherhood of Assassins, same as the other subjects Abstergo has been studying. List of things so far. The man is just about as stubborn as I am. He's good at talking to people, and fighting too. People see him as a protector and defender. His community admires and respects him. He's a shadow when it comes to not being seen. Yeah, I guess he fits the profile in part, but I wonder. He's got the tortured soul thing down pat, hell-bent on vengeance and all that stuff. He's got his own thing going on. I could feel it as though, as though it were me, which I guess it was for a while. This is so weird. His feelings. So much anger, sadness, and hate. So much guilt. Anyway, I need more information. Aya. I remember that name coming up. I remember the flutter in Bayek's stomach when he heard it. Maybe she's the answer. Only one way to find out. D's gonna love this. Okay, and then we have the empirical truth. Uh, Sapere Odd? No idea. But there's nothing under there. Alright, next we have the Gone Files. And there's someone else's portrait here. I don't know who that is. Um, I guess we haven't encountered her yet. Or maybe that's her partner. Maybe that's Deanna. But anyways, uh, we have the intro. The Gone Files. What the hell, Abstergo? Over the years, I've seen my fair share of crazy shit of it at Abstergo. Broken prem or promises, backstabbing, obscure HR procedures, false pretense. You see that in every corporation. But people, all key players, leaving or disappearing or dying in mysterious circumstances. It's right out of a conspiracy theory movie. Sometimes there's not a word from higher management just like that person was never here in the first place. At other times, we get a lame-ass a lame -ass excuse that smells of bullshit. When I think about the people that left, when I think about how Abstergo dealt with their departure, something just doesn't add up. I knew some of them. They weren't the kind of people who just quit to accept a job next door for a salary bump. I'm missing something. What is it? What really happened to those people? Did their disappearance have more meaning than management would like us to believe? Abstergo. If I could open you with a two by, if I could open you with a two by four screwdriver to find out what's behind that nice and shiny facade of yours, I asked Letitia England about it once. I made a vague reference to Subject Seventeen, and she sharply answered to keep to my stuff and stay out of it. Those are the exact magical words you don't want to have, or you don't want to have with me. Just ask my dad. Okay, next we have Alan Ricken. Alan Ricken, autopsy report from the coroner's office. A coroner's office. The coroner never had time to properly examine Ricken's body. Abstergo must have managed to get it back. Why did they want the corpse back so soon? Was there something they did not want the coroner to know? They put on quite the ceremony for the funeral, but they could have waited a few days. It's not like he was going anywhere. I went through Case Fisher's files, and the guy does have a few buried post-mortem reports, but nothing on Ricken. West London Council, Coroner Service, in the matter of the death of Alan Ricken. Preliminary report conducted by Deepti Sullivan. And then case number blah blah blah, date of report, December 15th, 2016. Date of death, December 14th, 2016. Uh, personal data, mail, date of birth, blah, blah, 1951. Place of death, Holborn Hall, London. Interior, no specific location, was not allowed inside. Time of death is 9.29 p.m. Medical cause of death, lack of oxygen and aspiration of blood. Marks and wounds, blade damage to the trachea, horizontal incision of the neck. Victim suffered blow to the head, post-mortem, right side possibly due to the fall of the body to the ground. Right hand, slows sh uh, right hand shows slight anti-mortem burn, 
patterns from unknown origin. Could not perform any further examination. Body reclaimed by private conglomerate. Formal complaint lodged. Deep D. Sullivan, December 15, 2016. Alan Ricken, Grand Templar Hall Invitation. That's the night Alan Ricken died. No one I know was invited to that assembly. Not that I would have gone anyway. Too gilded for my taste. But still, what was the ceremony for? And what really happened that night? Uh, what is that? In your attendance we trust. Dr. Alan Ricken addresses the assembly. Grand Templar Hall, London. December 14th, 2016, at 9 o'clock in the evening. Alan Ricken, The Channel, reports on Ricken's death. The media reported Ricken's death as a gas leak accident. I was able to corroborate the operation with emergency services and the fire brigade, but the information I found was on the gas pressure levels that night. Wait. But the information I found on the gas pressure levels that night showed that they were pretty stable. Something doesn't add up. Was it what is it with Abstergo's higher-ups and unfortunate incidents, anyways? Uh, the Channel. Gas leak shuts down West End London District. Emergency services are still evacuating hundreds of people after a severe gas leak was reported in Holborn this evening. The incident occurred at about 9 p.m. A 35-meter cordon has been put in place. At least one fatality was reported. A man named Alan Ricken, who was present... Oh, that's all it goes. Okay. Then we have email to Sophia Ricken. Uh, Layla Hassan, or from Layla Hassan to S. Ricken. Sent December 14th, 2016, 2245. Subject, are you okay? Sophia, I've just seen the news about your dad. Please let me know you're okay. I know you had to be there too. They're still evacuating people from the district, and honestly, that gas leak story seems like the worst cover-up I've heard in a while. I know you told me to stop the emails, but tonight, I really need to know. Are you okay? Layla. Okay, next up in the Gone Files, we have Isabel Ardent. Abstergo Replacement Memo. Abstergo took a full year to replace Isabel. Alvaro Grammatica oversaw the operations here in the meantime. Simon Hathaway was a strange choice. I always thought Ricken and Grammatica were really appreciated or never really appreciated his work. But he must be doing something right. After all, he's still here and he's not dead. Yet. It says, Abstergo Operations Division, internal memo for immediate uh, distribution. Uh, two historical research employees, level clearance all, memo number blah blah blah, subject official nomination, effective date October 17th, 2016. Content. Friends. It is with great pleasure that I announce today the nomination of Mr. Simon Hathaway as head of Abstergo Industries Historical Research Division. He will be assisted by Mrs. Victoria Bibu. Although almost a year has passed, or ah, although almost a year has passed, I think it means has passed, since Miss Arden's unfortunate incident, we are confident that our long search has turned up the perfect candidate to pilot the future of the division. Mr. Hathaway presented me with some innovative, innovative hypotheses, or hypotheses, which could shake up the direction of the division. I ask you to assist him in any way possible so that we can make his vision a success for us all. Submitted by Alan Ricken, Chief Executive Officer. October 13, 2016. Isabel Ardent, email to Alvaro Gramatica. Isabel Ardent found something and Grammatica went through a lot to make sure the email was destroyed. 80,000 years ago. Strange architectural shapes and humanoids. What on earth is she talking about? And where is the Standish, temp or Standish sample today? Uh, let's see. From Isabel Ardent to Alvaro Grammatica. Sent October 31st, 2014, 2.05 a.m. 2A Grammatica. Subject, Precursor Memo. Alvaro, I hope you're sitting down. Blank was extracted from the Standish sample last week. 
The total video we have amounts to barely 2.7 seconds at 60 frames per second from a total of blank memories. But even with this obscure sample, I'm already getting butterflies. Blank. I pulled out uh, I pulled one frame from the video to show you how mangled the data is, but even at this quality, some striking details emerge. Note the blank figures, a full 20 inches taller on average than the humanoids nearby. Blank. The architecture looks like some combination of Sumerian, Egyptian, and Babylonian, but the metals they're using are blank alloys. Elsewhere, we see, elsewhere we see stranger architectural shapes. These structures have no modern precedent anywhere in the world, though the memory's geostamp gives us a location southwest of the blank. Unfortunately, most of the geostamps on these images are confusing. Some point to a location in modern Jordan some 80,000 years ago, other, uh, other to a few locations in blank in Ethiopia. But so far, we haven't been able to nail anything down with much precision. Archive Crawler was not able to reconstruct clustered data with integrity. Isabel Ardent, The Channel, reports on Ardent's death. I know Abstergo well enough to suspect we weren't, or they weren't doing this out of charity. The restoration gave historical research unprecedented access to Buckingham Palace. But what was Ardent doing there? What was she looking for? They never told us what really happened to her, and, let's face it, the official version doesn't make any sense. What was so delicate that she couldn't send the team through normal channels? Uh, let's see, we got the channel, London Metro. Prominent scholar electrocuted in Buckingham Palace. Renowned historian Isabel Ardent met an unlikely end while conducting restoration work in one of Buckingham Palace's newly reopened rooms. Wiring dating back or wiring dating from the first electri electrification of the palace through the 1880s seems to be at the source of the incident. During World War II, many of the palace's 775 rooms were closed off for security reasons, and Abstergo's Historical Research Division just recently offered the Crown Estate uh, to organize and oversee the dot dot dot. All right, we have Olivier Garnet, or Garneau. Olivier Garneau, Restaurant Bill. Olivier Garneau was alive and well in Chicago in 2014, even if it, even if his disappearance, huh, even if his disappearance was reported way back in 2013. If his money trail is to be is to be believed, he was dining alone in May 2014. Who on earth orders an extra country grave gravy? Uh, ordered a bunch of stuff. Looks like a kind of expensive place. <laughs> Paying sixty-one dollars to eat by yourself. Wish I had that kind of money to throw around. And he was eating at Quinkies, 480 North Michigan Ave Avenue, Chicago, Illinois. Uh, Chicago CCTV footage. I'll admit, it's hard to know what's going on in this scene. From what I could tell from the CCTV footage, the plates matched Olivier Garneau's car rental. And it does look like him, but, well, that's not his best angle, to say the least. It's all speculation, of course, because the official version is that he never made it to Chicago. But I know otherwise. Okay, next up, Desmond Miles, which I remember him. He's the main character of the first game. Uh, Desmond Miles, Abstergo's preliminary medical report. Found Subject 17's initial medical report after a team picked him up in New York City and flew him over to the Abstergo campus in Rome. He was fit and cleared for the Animus in September 2012, willingly collabor collaborating in the project. And yet, he was found dead three months later in a cave in upstate New York, apparently on the run. What happened to him? Why did he leave? Abstergo Lineage Research and Acquisition, Medical Division, Medical Examination Report. And a bunch of stuff about him. Only the bottom part really matters. So date is September 3rd, 
2012, Subject 17. Patient has no active complaints, no active distress, no prior history. Blood pressure normal, 112 over 78. Primary blood analysis, no significant traces of chemicals that could lead to neurological disorder. No indication the patient will be prone to neurosis. Uh, unlike previous subjects, patient is psychologically stable. You are clear to proceed. Damien Siravakos. Desmond Miles, Wanted Poster. Abstergo had a thing for Desmond. They went for him, specifically. A team was assigned to pick up a person of interest in September 2012 in Washington Square Park. They didn't even take him back to the Philly office. They flew him directly to Dr. Warren Vidic in Rome. If that's not some serious interest, I don't know what that is. Have you seen this man? Desmond Miles, age 25, height 6 foot, weight 195 pounds, brown hair, brown eyes. Last seen September 1st, 2012, near Washington Square Park, wearing white hoodie, white hoodie and dark jeans. If you have any information, please contact us. Subject 17, uh, Subject 17's postmortem report. Date, May 9th, 2014. Dug these out from Case Fisher's files. Proof that Desmond's DNA found its way back to Abstergo after all. How did he die? And what's up with those burns on his arm? Title, last emails from W. Miles to D. Miles. Date, August 12, 2015. William Minel, uh, eh, William Miles's, la, uh, I can't talk. William Miles' final messages to his son, Desmond. There we go. Miles Sr. was in Cairo when Abstergo found him. Looks like Subject 17 busted him out of our Italian facility a few days before he died. From William Miles to D. Miles. Sent December 8th, 2012. At uh, 8.27 p.m. To D. Miles. Subject, don't worry. I know you think it's dangerous for me to head to Egypt on my own. And you're probably right. Wouldn't be surprised if Cross is already there. They're looking these things down left and right. But we don't have a lot of options. If there's a chance to grab the last power source, we've got to take it. I promise I'll be careful. I've been fighting these bastards since before you were born. Literally. From William Miles to D. Miles. Sent December 11, 2012. 8.18 p.m. To D. Miles. Subject, I'm sorry. They're going to be here soon. Trapped me in this damn museum. Should have taken more precautions. I'm sorry, son. It wasn't fair for me to come down on you the way I did. You never asked for any of this, and I should have been more understanding. I hope you can forgive me. I love you. Title, William Miles Held Captive at Abstergo. Date, August 14th, 2015. Security footage from Warren Vidic's office a few days before Subject 17's death. It's hard to tell, but I'm pretty sure it's William Miles, Desmond's father. Why did Abstergo detain him? Okay, uh, next we'll look at her mail. And she's got a lot of it. It's starting in 2014. So we have from Leila Hassan to Sophia Ricken, February 10th, 2014. Uh, from Leila Hassan to Sophia Ricken, date February 10th, 2014, 4.55 a.m. Subject, you're looking at it the wrong way. Morning, Sophia. I spent the whole night looking at the sketches you sent me, and you're all looking at it the wrong way. If you really are thinking about a robotic arm for the Animus Ari, then my only advice is this, mark my words, inverted six-axis motion rig. You want to be able to give the subject some leeway, some sense of freedom, and yet allow the core of the machine to stay connected no matter what kind of crazy gymnastics your subject is performing. So make sure the hydraulic actuators are top-notch, nothing under 6,000 ISP. You'll know just by listening to them. If they sound like a groom on the last night of his bachelor's bachelor bender, change them. They aren't worth your time, and they'll only obstruct your subject's movement. L. 
From Sophia Ricken to Leila Hassan. Date February 13th, 2014, 9 p.m. And this is the reply. Leila, just to make sure I understand you correctly, you are actually proposing that we suspend our subjects in midair by the means of a large motorized mechanical device. I must have read your email five times, just to make sure. At first I thought you were joking, but I dropped the idea and grabbed Gabrielle King's ear, our chief engineer here in Madrid, and his initial reaction was quite like mine until something changed in his smile. Let's say we were to consider a six-axis motion rig. This is all hypothetical, of course, but please indulge me. Would there be any plausible compatibility between this rig and the epidural bearing I showed you the other day? Could we ensure the stability of the needle and its positioning to the subject's backbone? I feel like I'm teetering on the frontiers of science and nonsense. It's crazy talk, but it's, but it's exhilarating crazy talk. S. From Isabel Ardent to Leila Hassan. Date, March 29th, 2014, 8.41 a.m. Subject, Disciplinary Action. Hello, Layla. In light of recent events, I have but no choice to take appropriate disciplinary measures and request a performance improvement plan through operations. I know you barely just came back, but I feel it's better to do it now than to let things sour again. We'll put you in contact with a coach to help you deal with some of the issues you've been experiencing here. The results last time were encouraging, so perhaps we can resort to that strategy once again. Dr. Lees has even agreed to meet with you again, but rest assured we would be open to changing the coach if you so desire. You are bold, and your work here is appreciated, but the procedures in place are not only here to protect you, but also Abstergo, and if you can't give an ounce of care to your own safety, then perhaps you can show a little respect for the hand that feeds you. Work with us, Layla. That's all we're asking. Isabel. From Leila Hassan to Deanna Geary. Date, April 11, 2014, 2, or, ah, April 11, 2014, 2.03 a.m. Subject, I need one of those. I just visited your online shop for the first time, and I must say you hide your cards pretty well, Miss Deanna Geary. Who knew a poised and professional medical officer could have such a foul potty mouth? Needless to say, I'm buying a bunch of your cross-stitch patterns. I'm keeping some for me but I'll also offer some of them around. I think you have the perfect one for Otso Berg. He keeps talking, or he keeps taking my parking space. L. From Leila Hassan to Juhana, or Juhani Otso Berg. Date, April 21st, 2014, 9.07 a.m. Subject, parking space. Mr. Berg. I'm afraid you've developed the, b the bad habit of parking in my allocate or allotted space. Now, I know you're higher than me in the Abstergo food chain, and your car clearly has less rust than my 1987 sports car. But my HR hiring paper clearly states that 23FG is Layla Hassan's, so I would appreciate it if you could park your vehicle somewhere else. L. From Juhani Atzoberg to Layla Hassan. Date, April 21st, 2014, 9.10 a.m. Subject is the reply. The day you get an assignment done properly is the day I might deign to consider your request. Now, you can place a formal complaint, but knowing how much you cherish procedures, I'll assume you probably won't even know where to look for the form. Also, I'm keeping your little cross-stitching gift. Even though it's offensive, the worksmanship is quite spectacular. Juhani Otzoberg. From Leila Hassan to Sophia Ricken, date January 2nd, 2015, 8.05 p.m. Reply again. Oh, reply to you're looking at it the wrong way. Sophia, hello. Don't leave me hanging here. Tell me, how's the work on the device progressing? Did you guys finally build, built, did you guys finally build a prototype? You can't just ask stuff and then shut me out. It doesn't work that way. You can't, or why can't you just fly me there? I mean... Even if it's just a temporary position. Something interim? Friggin' Abstergo janitor for all I care. I could help your team way better on location than through this free cheap-ass once-in-a-blue-moon email consultation. It makes me feel dirty every single time you do it, and I've told you how I felt before. Yet, here we are again. 
Either you don't care or this Eureka effect is getting you drunk on epiphanies. Think about it, Sophia. This is getting really frustrating. L. From Leila Hassan to Sophia Ricken. Date, August 4th, 2016. 1.59 p.m. Subject, you have to be kidding me. Sophia, I just heard you guys are working on a portable version of the Ari. Is that true? A portable animus? How could you not tell me? How can you still send me some bland email, asking seemingly innocent questions, and then turn around and work on the most exciting freaking machine ever, without even letting me in on it while knowing it has my name all over it? Just who do you think I am? A fortune-telling machine? A secret little muse hiding in the shadows? Those were good for absinthe-soaked 19th... Ah! Those were good for absinthe-soaked 19th century poets, and they all died of syphilis. Enough with the penny haikus of wisdom. I've given you all I have. My time, my brain power, my trust. And if that's not worth a place within your team, I'm not sure what is. L. From Leila Hassan to Simon Hathaway. Date, November 10th, 2016. 8.55 p.m. Subject, assignment type request. Mr. Hathaway, I'd like to thank, or I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for your kind words. I know I'm not always the easiest person to work with, but somehow you always seem to have the right words to diffuse the situation. I really enjoyed our lunch last week, and your advice was more than welcome. Trust me when I say these are not words I'm used to saying. It shows that you have a genuine passion about what you are doing, and I really appreciate that. I had a small favor to ask. I swear I wasn't buttering, buttering you up for this. I don't butter up people. Ever. I was wondering if our HTT could be tasked with more person of interest type assignments. Not that I'm not enjoying the operations, but I could use some variety. And who knows, it might help with my social skills improvement plan. Just something to think about. L. And then we have this one right here. From Deanna Geary to Layla Hassan. Date, December 18th, 2016, 9.59 a.m. Subject, Xmas Vacation. Hey, Layla. Alan Ricken died while attending something he felt he had to wear a black cape to attend to. That's creepy, I know. And you're worried sick about Sophia. That's understandable. There's nothing on his daughter in the papers or the Abstergo memos. So the fact that she's not answering doesn't mean she's in harm's way. Pretending your little tinkering project is helping you change your mind is bogus, and you know it. Why don't you come to my folks' place for the Christmas holiday? We'll celebrate whatever it is you wish to celebrate, including the famous secular tradition of not celebrating anything at all, if that's what works for you. My mom will cook some, my mom will cook some pumpkin pie. My dad will ask us if we won't shoot at rodents, or why we won't shoot at rodents, and we'll eat a non-vegan breakfast in a dodgy casino before we spend the day outside snowmobiling. I love North Dakota, but it could sure use a bit of Layla Hassan. Say yes, it'll be good for both of us. D. From Layla Hassan to Deanna Geary. Date, December 18th, 2016, 2.50 p.m. The reply. You sure know how to make a girl happy. Rodents in a dodgy casino? I think I'll pass. There's nothing I want more than being with my little stone-cold crazy machine right now. I've just come up with an idea for the sequencer, and I can't get it out of my head. So far, it's only a sketch on a dirty placemat, so I have to get busy if I want to test it before I go into retirement, if that ever happens. Sorry, I'm being an ass. It's a very nice offer, D, and I appreciate your concern, but I'll be fine. Don't worry, I always am. Besides, I promised Hathaway I'd complete my operation reports. I must be 10 or 12 behind. Most of them hardly have anything besides our names and the mention, done. He told me they had to be completed before the end of the year, otherwise he would file a formal complaint to operations, which could mean more coaching from the mediator, and that is just pure torture. No, I like the guy, so I'll cut him some slack and get him his reports before he gets to seeing Auld Lang Seen. I have no idea what that is. L. From Deanna Geary to Layla Hassan, December 18th, 2016, 5.01 p.m., reply. If you say so, let me know if you need any help with those reports. How about we get out of here and grab some takeout? You can show me the progress on your little project. 
I might have an idea for the dialysis unit. D. From Leila Hassan to Deanna Geary, date March 8th, 2017, 1.21 a.m. Where am I? D. Chains of plans. I know you're waiting in your little hotel room in downtown San Francisco right now, and you think I'm heading towards the wharf, but you're wrong. I had an idea and I'm about to board a flight for Tokyo. I'm on my way to Onagawa, Japan. Don't freak out, I know what I'm doing. Just be ready to pick up your side in 24 hours or so. I'll need your remote assist. Cover me, or cover for me if dispatch calls in. L. From Deanna Geary to Leila Hassan, June 5th, 2017, 5.01 p.m. I got what you need. Hey, Leila, I got what you asked for. I was able to get my hands on four of the drugs we discussed. It was easier than I thought it would be. Everybody has a price, and that includes doctors and lab assistants. I'll keep the immunosuppressant in the sealed casing for now, unless I get a sudden taste for muscles and large sol- shoulders, in which case your steroids are, are all mine. I'm jesting, of course. Are you free Friday? Let's go to the movies or binge on some police procedural TV series. You know, so we can call out all the fake stuff they're doing. Talk to you later, D. Wait, that was the one I was just on, right? Ah. No, that I jumped back to. Okay, here we go. From Leila Hassan to Deanna Geary. Date, July 3rd, 2017, 7.13 p.m. Subject, AMA. Hey, D, allow me to copy-paste this glorious extract from my July 1st AMA. The internet is just like the ocean, you know. There are some really cool fish and reefs and sunken U-boats. But once in a while, there are these trashed rubber duckies that crossed half the globe to gather in piles of useless rubbish. And no one knows how to get rid of them ever. Uh, LH, hey, I'm Layla Hassan, ask me anything. At Little Beto Liz, hi there. Was wondering what's your favorite geek sound? Like, what sound do you love falling asleep to? I love the clicking of my blue mechanical keyboard switches. They just have the most satisfying clicks ever. I think I would have slept like an angel in an early 1920s bullpen. bullpen. All those typewriting clicks. At Scuffle Scobble. What's your favorite song and what does it remind you of? Easy. Overtime Food by Ra Victoria. When I karaoke, it's the one song I have to sing every single time. It it reminds me of the night I met them backstage at the Madison Square Garden, back in 2000. I'm usually the one turning it up to 11, but that time, I was so thunderstruck, I could hardly move. Picks or it didn't happen. Picks happened, but there's no way they ever go public. From Leila Hassan to Deanna Geary, Deanna Geary, September 29, 2017, 3.15 a.m. It's ready. Hey, D. I wish there was an audio message so you could hear the nice roar of the portable animus. Everything seems to be in perfect order. The software is running, my vitals are showing perfectly, and all the tests done on the DNA samples are turning up positive. I've combined some strange strands, and somehow the sequ- sequencer always returns a valid simulation to play. I haven't dared to go into any of them. Not alone. Not without you. And the Animus isn't ready for a live test either. Maybe I'm just buying time. But that combined strand of both you and Milton looks tempting. All in due time. All in due time. L. From Deanna Geary to Leila Hassan, September 29th, 2017, 6.46 a.m. And it's the reply. Are you flipping insane? There's so much to yell at, ah, there's so much to yell about, I don't even know where to start. Milton's DNA? Really? Layla, how can you bring him into this? The poor guy, give him a break. I mean, you want to use Subject 17's DNA? Fine, he's dead. But Milton? My Milton? You access his file to save his ass, and you think stealing his DNA profile at the same time is okay? I'll tell you once, my man is off limits. You erase the data now. Oh, and yes, there was this second thing. Do not go into your animus. You're a whiz, and a genius, and a geek, and an engineer extraordinaire, but you're not insane. We don't know if it works. We don't know what it does. 
and we don't even know what kind of simulation it runs. Remember, remember the story about Eileen Bach, Subject Zero, the surrogate initiative? She was exploring other people's genetic memories and ended up dead with an effing fried brain. You're not toying with an Omega Animus, Layla. It's the real thing. And if you ever want to go in there, we'll need to take all the proper precautions. Please, Layla. I'd hate to see something happen to you. Just wait for me, okay? D. From Layla Hassan to Deanna Geary, date October 20th, 2017, 1210 p.m. Subject, Egypt. Hey, D. Can you pack the sealed container with the immunosuppressants? Just in case. I know the assignment states we're going after yet another artifact of high interest, but, well, you never know. What if there's something else? Can you imagine? This could be a chance to try out our version of the portable animus in the field. I'm not talking about actually synchronizing with the simulation. Well, I might, but I'm not really. Wait, well, I might, but I'm not. Really, I promise. But you never know. Maybe I'll just do a sequencing test if I find something. If, see? It's conditional. I'll repeat it one more or I'll, re ugh, I'll repeat it one more time. If feel better? Time to pack. Still good for tonight? Drinks are on me. L. All right, wait. I didn't skip one, did I? All right, and the final mail. From Layla Hassan to Deanna Geary, Deanna Geary. Date October 21st, 2017, 4:45 a.m. Subject: What if? D. Wow. Why is my head still spinning? I barely had more than a few drinks, but I just thought of something. You know how the Animus sequences DNA to run simulations based on genetic memories? What if, and this might be the fifth old-fashioned talking here, what if we could actually find a way to do the same through inorganic matter? Sure, we'd be out of cod codons, but we'd still have molecular structures to work with. I mean, it took years for Dr. Vidic to crack genetic memories, and once he got to them, he went nuclear on decoding them. What if he stopped too fast? What if isomers are packed with molecular molecular memories? Okay, maybe mo eh, okay, maybe molecules are too big. Maybe we need to consider that the information might be stored deep down at the subatomic level. Why would memory latch uniquely onto organic molecules? I mean, I've seen stranger things, but somehow I just can't find any plausible reason why it wouldn't. I wish my middle of the night emails were more about a date I just kicked out or an obnoxious neighbor. Sorry, I guess you're stuck with me. Lucky girl. L. Okay, uh, next we'll look at pictures. Got New York City, 1989. New York City, 1994. New York City, 2000. Berkeley, California, 2004. Philadelphia, 2011. Philadelphia, 2017. And Philadelphia, 2017. Okay, then we have audio. So long, suckers. So long. Thanks for all the fish, Berkeley. March 21st, 2006. The day Layla Hassan drops out of college. That's right, Professor Moore. I'm not finishing that Jane Eyre paper. I got a job, and I'm headed to Philly next week. This whole classroom thing, it's not for me. Mom and Dad are freaking out, but they'll accept it. I'll be working towards something real, making real money, and I'll be closer to home. Not that I'll visit any more often. Sophia promised there would always be a place for me at Absurgo, as long as I show them what I can do with a circuit board and a pair of pliers. Sure, I'll have to work my way up to a place on her special project, but that doesn't matter. It won't be long before she or her father, Mr. Alan Rickin, notices what I'm capable of and asks for my help on the Animus. Such Inui. Inui? I don't know what that is. Much bored. I swear, I get more done reading the latest copy of Wired on the toilet than the rest of the guys do all day in the lab. I mean, the body band? 
really? If people can't take a walk on their own, they aren't going to listen to a watch that tells them to do it either. This is all so pointless. I should just go back to... Wait. That's probably what the body band would tell me to do. What I should do is build something that will simultaneously blow people's minds and the doors off the Animus Project. Nothing at Abstergo Fitness is going to be big enough for that. I'm bored as hell. But there's nothing like boredom to stimulate creativity. Yep. I think the body band needs a little adjustment to its language processing program. Home again. The right decision always feels like home. My stuff's the same. My locker smells the same. It's like I never left. But I did. And I can never unlearn what I know now. How will it change my work at the Historical Research Division? Hard to say. All I know is that it will. Our Dom booked us a lunch. Nothing fancy. She wanted me to meet Deanna Geary, my new medical officer. She looks like she was born in the middle of a cornfield, but she seems okay. I can't believe she left homemade cookies on my desk. I don't know why I told her about getting stood up last weekend. I never talk about personal stuff at work. At least it seems like I can trust her. You need that to stay alive in the field. Too bad most of Abstergo's tactical units don't consider trust a priority. Trick or treat. Animus. No mention in the official credits, but all those emails, all those middle-of-the-night phone calls from Madrid, there's a lot of me in there. Sophia, if I'd known you just wanted to strip mine my brain and leave me in the dark, I never would have followed you. Go away! There's no candy here! Nothing in life is ever free. Ever. The Animus. I can tell. I know it wouldn't have worked without my advice. Just look how they did... The heat sink, the VRMs, the high amperage rating by transistor. It was me who told them it would offset failure of the... What's this? Hello there, DNA reader module. Are you ringing my doorbell? Maybe there's some candy here after all. Under the hood. I've come to the conclusion that Sophia is shit at hiring staff. The entire Madrid facility. Ugh. How do they not see it? It would be so easy. You just have to parse the genetic memory input and work from smaller data pools. You could even process incomplete samples and still create a reliable model for high levels of synchronization. The reader module and the decryption software would need an update, but it's doable. Madrid's probably congratulating themselves just for getting this far. Meanwhile, I'm partying with some congealed veggie curry three plasma screens, a disassembled animus, and Raw Victoria's debut album on loop. Sahetic. Dee will be mad when she sees how I use Milton's DNA, but what did she expect when she asked me for help? I needed someone's genetic profile to test the animus, and, well, his was right there. All in the name of science. A girl, uh, a girl called Deanna. I like morning briefings. They're short, minimal nonsense, and they have free coffee. No downtime this week. They're putting me and Dee on a plane to Alexandria two days from now. I don't get why Hathaway's in such a rush. We're being deployed to extract an artifact. If it were a person of interest, the push would make more sense. A person could be halfway across the world in a couple of hours. But an artifact that's been sitting around for 2,000 years, it's not going anywhere. An artifact of high interest. Heard that before. It always ends up being some crappy pottery shard or half an old book. My animus runs on DNA, not tableware. It'll be strange visiting Egypt for the first time since 2013. Back then I went looking for my roots and found trouble instead. It's good that Dee's coming. She always keeps me from doing anything too stupid. Found the mother load. Turns out, the artifact of high interest is also a person of interest. A mummy. And a golden opportunity. I've informed Dee of some changes I'm making to our assignment parameters. She acted mad, but I know she's eager to see my animus field tested. Abstergo won't mind. 
Well, they would if they found out, but they won't. <laughs> Hathaway's intel was a disaster. They have no idea what's going on with this extraction. He'll take his fun and all, but that's not why I left Berkeley. If the Animus lets me ride DNA this old, if the reader can model the missing codons and extrapolate the genetic memories that aren't mine, Sophia would lose her... Abstergo. Abstergo will come to me on their hands and knees. My name will be right up there with Warren Vidix. Anamita Kidaminda. Too bad the Madrid facility got blown up. But I bet they'll build a new one soon. This one will be in Philly, and its lead engineer will be Leila Hassan. Okay, next is whatever this is, W-E-R. W-E-R, mind blown. One, sticky post. Uh, at if Layla then Hassan is now moderating the W-E-R mind blown channel. Got a story that sounds like fiction, but that's actually science? Post it. There are minds to be blown and brains to be fed. Play nice or I'll get you banned. For starters. Two, the Voynich Manuscript. Another fake so-called Voynich Manuscript popped up at auction last week in Athens, Greece. It's the third time in the past ten years. Funny how this manuscript keeps appearing in history books, only to be stolen shortly after. And for what? Flower sketches and esoteric formulas? Rumor has it, even Abstergo has a major interest in the item, but you didn't hear that from me. 3. Cleo Dynamics Crystal balls do exist, they're just shaped like computers. Cleo Dynamics is right off from Asimov's psycho history. Forward thinking scientists are using historical data from the past to build mathematical models that help them predict the future. So far, they're pretty accurate. Problem is, the future ain't pretty. Would you trust your rig to tell you what's coming? Is tomorrow really only a string of numbers? Uh, four, do-it-yourself pinball. At Suzy Patuti challenges the users of WER Mindblown to a contest for the best do-it-yourself pinball machine ever built. Entries must be submitted before, uh, was June 18th, 2017, with a link showing the machine in action. If there aren't any sound or light effects, don't even bother submitting. Hashtag makers gonna make, hashtag get tinkered. Uh, five, community manager AMA. Hi, I'm Layla, ah, hi, I'm Layla Hassan, and I'll be hosting an AMA on July 7th, 2017. So, AMA about WER mind blown. Life hacks, keyboard pimping, cutting edge technologies, zetetics, classic rock, and my travels. Be warned though, I won't be answering anything pertaining to Abstergo Industries. I enjoy using the word no, so make an effort to ask something that won't bore me. 6. Gladstone Kitridge, Esquire Ground-penetrating radars are used to explore what might be hidden under ancient monuments. Cavities were detected under the Sphinx's paws some 20 years ago. Most are natural caves, but some have yet to be investigated. Could one of them be the mythical Hall of Records? A lost library much like the lost library of Alexandria? The idea is not new. Gladstone Kitteridge, Esquire, went on famous digs, trying to uncover the lost knowledge in the 19th century. Okay, and all that remains is the trash. Trash can. Email from Sophia, or Sophia Ricken to Leila Hassan. From Sophia Ricken to Leila Hassan. Date, August 31st, 2016, 11.50 a.m. Subject, Farewell Layla. Status, Deleted. Layla, there's no nice way to put this, so I'll be honest. We met years ago. I remember seeing you for the first time crossing McLaughlin Hall at Berkeley and thinking just how you would thrive in Abstergo's Young Innovators program. And then I watched you make the jump into the great unknown. But the fact is, 
Even after all the insight you've given us, I'm still not sure I can place my trust in you to be a part of the Animus Project here in Madrid. How many sanctions were added to your operation file after I asked you to respect the boundaries of your assignments? Too many, Layla. Too many. You have a brilliant mind, but you are also unpredictable. I cannot afford to have a loose cannon in the lab putting the team's progress at risk. It's hard enough to handle the subjects as it is. I wish you would put your spirit to greater use, that I could give you a task and know deep down that the, that the next morning I would find you ironing out the details, and not in the lounge rearranging a highly classified piece of code on an unsecured laptop. Work hard, Layla, and forget about one day moving to the Animus Project. Focus on the challenges of the Historical Research Division. They are tailored for you. Perhaps one day, if you change your ways, I'll reach out again, just as I did in Berkeley. But until then, I ask you to respect my decision and stop contacting me. Uh, let's see, from LH to A and ZH. From Leila Hassan to Ashraf and Zinab Hassan. Date, October 21st, 2017, 2.03 a.m. Subject, hey. Status, draft, not sent. Hey, Mom. Hey, Dad. It's been a while. I hope you're doing okay. And my overprotective brothers, too. My next assignment is taking me to Egypt. I'm leaving tomorrow. And, well, it made me think of you. Of course, I'm not supposed to disclose any of my mission details, but... You know how bad I am with rules. Going back to Egypt, I don't know. It feels right. I wanted you to know. Not sure it'll make you happy, but everything's falling into place, it seems. You never forgave me for dropping out of Berkeley, but in the end, I got a place at a, I got a place at, at Abstergo. I got to make my name or I got to make a name for myself. And now it's leading me back to the country of our ancestors, on official business no less, and not on some backpacking pipe dream. Those were your exact words, Dad. So yeah, I thought maybe you'd like to know that. I could fly back in for a visit when I come back. We could invite Rami and Caden and talk like adults. Well, maybe not Caden. I'm not sure how he knows I'm not sure he knows how to adult. And I could tell you all about my trip and something else I've been working on. Not sure you'd approve, but I think I'm on the brink of something big. And if I can just show you, you'll understand why I left Berkeley like I did. Being stubborn is the best thing you could wish on a daughter, Dad. I promise. Yeah, I killed the family phone 20 years ago. But because of it, and because of all the other appliances I might have sacrificed along the way, I can build a mean machine today. From Leila Hassan to Rami Hassan. From Leila Hassan to Rami Hassan, October 23rd, 2017, 1.50 p.m. Subject, just do it. Status, draft, not sent. Rami. Long story short, I'm standing in the middle of Alexandria's very busy Sok district, district. Egypt, not Virginia, Rami. And I have no time for email etiquette. I just need you to send me this picture of Mom, the one we took in Florida while we were visiting all the parks. I think I just found the perfect headscarf to replace the one she lost while we were on the trip years ago. Oh, and don't tell them where I am. It's a surprise. All right, so... That was everything. A lot of stuff there. So, let's go ahead and check out the area. We've got a laptop here. It's the same as what I was just doing. One bar. No, half a bar. And apparently her phone's about dead. Let's go back here. Come forth by day, and I will guide you home. Who are you talking to? Bayek's mummy. Need that med kit. Poor Bayek. Okay, let's go out the cave this way. Still looking for the oh, wait. What's I this? Packed it in, the med kit. in flight entertainment. The question mark, Egyptian mysteries, secret science investigations, investigation, hidden chambers and pyramids. Were they build, built? Were they built by aliens? Light on the myths and the proofs. Traces of ancient technologies, connections with gods or aliens. Don't miss encrypted messages surrounding the Sphinx 
interview with famous Egyptologist and scientist Dr. Leap E. Everett, Everett, Mummification and the Afterlife, Signs of Ancient Egyptian Spirits Among Us. Still looking for the cyclosporin? I definitely packed it in the med kit. Damn it, my papers went everywhere. Whoops, anything important? Yeah, the notes on the animus. Here's the blueprint from my Dallas system mod. Could have used a bigger fluid chamber. Could have used a bigger piece of tape over your mouth. Whoa, my so version. My version of the dialysis module. So we're gonna go and find her scattered papers. The genetic sequencer blueprint. Never got the creases out. A little something I like to call a genetic sequencer. I definitely packed it in the med kit. See, I thought there was a. Oh, right here. Generator's holding up. Good job, Layla. All right, there should be a couple more papers. Don't remember exactly where they are, but it's not a big cave. Need that med kit. Oh, where's it hiding? Hmm. Still looking for the cyclosporin? I definitely packed it in the med kit. Okay, well, it's not out here. So we'll head back in. I know there's at least one more. I thought there was two, but perhaps it's just one. So what we need to do is go back here. And then walk across this edge. To here. Abstergo's blueprint for the portable animus. Still a piece of shit. You sure love polishing it, though. I need that med kit. All right, let me do one final sweep because I thought there was one more. But I'm definitely not seeing it anywhere. Still looking oh, well. for cyclosporin? I definitely packed it in the med kit. If we don't find it. Or if it doesn't exist, it's not the end of the world. I'm sure we'll have plenty of opportunity in the future. But I think that's it, actually. I don't remember it being hard to find, so should have been right in the way. Alright, so anyways, finding those papers added some new stuff to the uh, laptop. Animus design. So we've got my version of the dialysis module. A little something I like to call a genetic sequencer. And what the portable animus blueprint should look like. Okay, I believe we're all done information gathering, so let's get that cyclosporin. Got the cyclosporin. Two CC should do it. Don't forget the alcohol wipe. I wish I was there to help. You do a good job looking after me, even from the hotel. And I know how you like your air con. Okay, and we're going back in. Do you want to return to the Animus? I do. Going back in. This is so badass. Be careful.
Store. The store allows you to enhance your game by purchasing additional items or time savers and gives you access to all the bonus content you may already own. The items you purchase come at your current level and can be upgraded at any blacksmith to follow your progression. We're happy to offer you 200 Helix credits to spend on anything you want. Access the store at any time from the pause menu. And we got the new quest. Alexandria is where the snake thrives and Aya lives. I must find them both. I got uh, Secrets of the First Pyramids. That was a special quest I got from pre-ordering the game. And then I also got the other new quest. I missed the name of it, but that's to go meet up with Aya. Um, so I guess we may as well look at the store. I actually haven't done it myself, um, but we should do that. So let's go to the store. Uh, let's see. Add-ons. I think I've already got them. Loading. So it looks like all of my stuff is already installed. I don't know why it says season pass coming soon. I believe I got that from my pre-order as well. Uh, but yeah, it looks like everything's in order. We got the packs. You can buy a legendary melee pack or legendary bows pack. There's gear. You can purchase. Uh, looks like outfits and mounts and sh shields and weapons, all that sort of stuff. Time savers, uh, drachma packs, resource packs, ability points packs. Jeez, oops, missed the rest of that. Um, and maps. Oh, I guess it reveals all the locations of stuff. Uh, Helix credits, uh, currency they use. Uh, you buy with real money to buy stuff in here, I assume. And then we have Owned, the Calamity Blade, regular sword. The Calamity Blade is n named for its ability to both create and resolve catastrophe. Oh. Oh, wait. It says I own it. So I guess just get? Okay. Well, I guess I just got it. I think that was must have been part of the pre-order thing. As you can tell, I paid a ton of attention to my pre-order. Uh, alright, so I got that new weapon. Oh, and I got some other weapons I didn't take care of. Uh, we got this light spear, but I'll stick with the purple one. It's got, a uh, critical hit damage. Uh, most often used from horseback to pierce enemies from afar and then draw them in close. Dismantle you. And where's the other... Oh, the Calamity Blade. It's legendary. Uh, the Calamity Blade is named for its ability to both create... Oh, right, I already read that. Uh, well, we might use that. I need to level it up first, though. It's only level 3. And then I need to try out the Eye of a Pep at some point, too. And it also needs to be leveled up. Okay. Uh, let's see. Was there anything else? Oh, right. I never uh, upgraded this. Increase range damage. Get that to rank 1. Oh, and there's a new shield as well. Oh. Mm, there's no new shield. I knew about those. Alright, and then our quest. We have Secrets of the First Pyramids. It's level 23. That's the pre-order one. And then we have Aya. And apparently I completed some action with the Ubisoft Club thingy. Gave me some Ubisoft points. And I think that was the same icon that we used in the store, so that might be getting me some store currency. So that's good, at least. All right, so we are all done here. That was a whole lot of reading, um, but we're all caught up on all the lore and everything that's going on, although it's a bit of information overload, so hopefully I can like sort of parse it all and piece it together. So thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.